Hi, dear friends. You're watching my critique for grandparents, a series inspired by my own real-life interactions explaining networking concepts to my grandparents, starting from the very basics. Last time we spoke about the placement of the wireless routers, uh, and I promised to tell you about different frequency spectrums. Uh, you've probably heard about the 2.4 GHz, uh, 5 GHz wireless networks, uh, maybe some of you have heard about 60 GHz networks. So, uh, connections. So, we're exploring radio waves today. But before I tell you about the different routers and practicalities, uh, let's take a quick look at some of the physics concepts behind all of this. At the core of it all we have Hertz, the international unit of frequency. Uh, it basically means that something happens once per second. The name comes from the German physicist Heinrich Rudolf Hertz, who proved the existence of electromagnetic waves. By the way, German word for heart is also Hertz, and our heart usually beats once per second, so one Hertz, everything is oddly connected, hmm? Interesting stuff. If I clap every second, you could say that the frequency of my clap is one Hertz. Uh, but how about a cooler example? Uh, my favorite musical instrument, the guitar. <laughs> so let's take the A string, uh, the fifth string. Uh, its frequency is uh, 110 Hertz, uh, usually, uh, in, in that octave. So uh, 110 vibrations per second. But uh, it's hard to see, right? But uh, with some cameras and shutter settings, you can actually see the vibrations for yourself. So that's Hertz. Uh, when we talk about routers, we usually say uh, gigahertz. Giga signifies billion of events per second. Insane, right? Uh, but you can think of it as a really, really, really fast Morse code. So a transmitter encodes data, broadcasts it with this super fast Morse code, and the receiver uh, gets the message and decodes it into something usable. Like this YouTube video, you know, radio broadcasts, all kinds of stuff. So that's step one uh, of understanding frequency spectrum. Just the stuff vibrating at different speeds. Uh, step two, start using the differences to our advantage. If we only used one frequency for everything, TV, radio, computer, phones, whatever, uh, nobody would know what's going on. The phones would be like, oh, what is this? The television would be, oh my God, I can, can't find my channels, <laughs> and so on. And uh, you might have noticed this, when you turn on the microwave, the Wi-Fi might be acting up sometimes, especially if you're using like an old router. That's because microwaves operate in the same frequency as the good, good old 2.5 GHz wireless network. And don't worry, microwaves, they have shielding, so, but it's just not perfect. Microwaves are super powerful, and even if a tiny bit gets out, it's enough to mess with the 2.5 GHz wireless. Uh, so that's one of the reasons we have 5 GHz uh, wireless networks. To get around the noisy, crowded 2.5 GHz spectrum. So that's one example. But there are other benefits to having multiple frequencies we can use. Um, consider this. Lower frequency uh, signals can travel further. Sounds good, right? Maybe. But... Um, it could be good if you are the only one with a wireless router. In reality, even if you limit the antenna of your router, your neighbors, they are completely unaware of this whole frequency thing. They don't know. So their Wi-Fi is blasting around like crazy, causing interference, uh, making your connection worse. Uh, uh, like with the example when I mentioned the TV which doesn't know which channel to use because there's just one frequency, the same principle. 
uh, your router is picking up all the noise from the neighbors, right? So um, other frequencies, if we switch away from 2.5 GHz, which travels quite far, uh, these other frequencies can be less crowded because, not just because they are uh, less popular, but also by design, uh, because of the physics behind them. The waves just don't travel as far, and so it's a good thing. Another aspect is speed and bandwidth. We won't be getting too deep in this topic. It's a bit advanced, but uh, just know this for now. Uh, higher frequencies usually mean higher speeds. Are there any sacrifices? Of course, everything comes with a price. Um, in this case, uh, less coverage, like we already discussed, uh, which can be a pro and a con, right? Uh, then there's the problem of penetration, uh, going through something like a wall or whatever. Higher frequency signals have more trouble going through solid objects. But wait, Victors, what about a gamma radiation? What about X-rays? It penetrates stuff easily, and the frequency is super high, we all know that. You are right, guys, you are right. But there's, mm, there's uh, another aspect here. And this is getting out of hand. Uh, I study journalism at the university, not physics. But uh, the thing with the x-rays and everything, it has something to do with energy. If the energy is high enough, the, wa the waves will penetrate anything. But look, nobody is making routers that powerful, rest assured. So let's put radiation aside for now, it's irrelevant here. Another problem with higher frequency radio waves, uh, they can be affected by weather, you need uh, a clear line of sight uh, between the devices, so uh, you usually would mount them on a pole or a mast. Um, so there's that. But there are some solutions, some creative solutions, uh, some creative technical solutions. So if we take a look at our Cube 60G AC, it's a 60 gigahertz device for distances around 800 meters. Uh, you would usually use it to connect, like um, to bridge um, multiple locations, uh, like uh, maybe some uh, festivals or sports venues. Uh, we've seen them in parks or in the countryside, even like connecting your sauna to your guest house, whatever. But uh, imagine you have a terrible weather. There's heavy rain, stuff flying around the connection might get interrupted. You don't want that. Um, here comes the creative solution. We have added to this device an automatic five gigahertz backup connection. If the signal gets choppy, it switches to five gigahertz. Okay, little bit less speed, mm, some other moments, but you get uninterrupted connection. Why? Because we have learned to use the different frequencies. So, yeah, physics are helping us to do more. That's great. Uh, thank you, physics. Uh, for most applications, you will uh, be using five gigahertz networks, I think. Uh, that's the golden mean, as they say. Uh, it's fast, uh, it's stable, it offers a reasonable range, not too far, but also not, uh, not, uh, <laughs> not too small for range. Uh, and uh, Quick reminder, 5 GHz has nothing to do with 5G. Uh, sometimes people mix them up, but 5G uh, is all about mobile networks. Uh, we can talk about that in some other video if you want, uh, but for now, just uh, remember that it's not the same. And another thing I just want to remind you that these wireless signals, they're non-ionizing. They don't cause any harm to people. They can barely go through skin, but um, you can compare it to light because light is also uh, just a, just a wave uh, with uh, on on this whole sp frequency spectrum thing. And light can penetrate the skin a little bit, right? But uh, if the light would be powerful enough, it can also do 
stuff to you, but nobody is afraid of light. And it's the same with wireless signal. Uh, there's no like uh, exposure to Wi-Fi that can accumulate. So you don't have to turn your routers off uh, during the night and uh, stuff like that. So five gigahertz, not the same as 5G, but even if you think about 5G, it's also uh, completely safe. So remember that and watch the previous video on the router placement if you haven't yet. With all that being said, you still might be confused what device do I need? I don't need a physics lecture, just tell me what device should I buy? Okay, let's look at your exact situation. First of all, where do you live? Do you live in a, in a big city? Lots of neighbors, so many devices in one spot? Then uh, most likely you will have trouble with 2.5 gigahertz because everyone is using that frequency. So you definitely want a 5 gigahertz or a dual band router in the city. Uh, most uh, newer routers are dual band. So they use two bands, 2.5, uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Uh, and you would use the 2.4 for older devices, some older TVs. Uh, I, at home I have a smart lamp that only uses the 2.4. So it's nice to have, but um, all the daily tasks would use the 5 gigahertz. If you don't live in the city, you can save some money and forget about 5 gigahertz. Because if you don't have neighbors, uh, 2.4 is okay, it's, it's less speed, but it also, it can cost less and I mean, not everyone needs the highest speed if you just watch uh, some videos mm, and so and uh, just use it to browse the internet. Who cares if you are, uh, if you have like 400 megabits or a gigabit, doesn't matter. Uh, you can save some costs this way. So yeah, low frequencies, low speed, <laughs> high frequencies, high speed. Low frequencies can work basically anywhere. High frequencies are picky. You need line of sight. And in the middle, we have the five gigahertz, which is what you would usually want in a city and 2.4 if you are somewhere which is not that crowded and you have older devices and you are really, really on a budget. So there's that.